Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today's project is going to be a huge one and it's it's going to be the first time I've ever done something like this to be honest with you, but I think I have a pretty good idea of how we're going to do it. Today we're going to make a guardian farm and guardian farms have changed quite a lot since their original concept. In the first instance when I think guardians were added back in like 1.8 I think back when ocean temples first became a thing and guardian farms have evolved a lot since then especially with the addition of the update aquatic because there are new ways of moving guardians around that were not previously possible so we're going to take advantage of one of those today we're going to need a lot of soul sand for it so grab all of the soul sand you can and meet me over at the ocean monument well it sure has been a while since we were here <laughs> it, it's actually been probably about 30 or 40 or so episodes i think we came here about a month or two ago originally just conquered the ocean monument take care of all the elder guardians inside there and actually hollowed the entire thing out drained it all out and grabbed as much prismarine as we could but that is not the only thing you can do with ocean monuments because the inhabitants of these ocean monuments, namely the guardians that you can see swimming around here and there, actually drop both prismarine shards and prismarine crystals, which are the ingredients that you need to make all forms of prismarine, including sea lamps. So it is a good idea to set up a farm for these guys. Now, the problem with that is that it involves working with a lot of water. <laughs> the ocean monument is completely drowned in water, and even though we've hollowed out the inside of the ocean monument at this point, the guardians are still going to be present around the outside. It's not going to be very easy to control them, and on the inside here, we have a wide open space that is not really doing all that much right now. Nothing can spawn in here, not even regular hostile mobs. As you can see, I've been here for a little while. There are tons of dark spaces where hostile mobs could spawn, but the bounding box of an ocean monument is actually a spawn-free zone, with the exception of guardians when there is water present. And as I said at the beginning of the episode, there are a few different ways of creating a guardian farm. One way is to use the interior of the ocean monument to control a spawnable space for the guardians, to create a kind of water tank in here where where they can be sort of set up to die easily. You can set up some water sources that the guardians swim out of and they fall into a pit of lava before they go through to a killing area. That means they're already on fire when they die and you collect the drops kind of passively that way. So a lot of guardian farm designs favor some sort of mechanism whereby the player delivers the final killing blow to the guardians, enabling you to get as many resources out of it as possible because with a looting three sword, you have a higher chance of getting more prismarine shards and getting prismarine crystals. Some of the more ambitious guardian farms actually drained out the entire perimeter of the bounding box of an ocean monument so that you get every possible space where a guardian can spawn cleared out of water so that they can only spawn in a very limited space of water that you set up yourself and the same thing applies you drop them through lava or something like that and it gets them in a position to be like a softer kill basically you have a bunch of guardians all drain into one area then you swipe at them with a sword and they're a one hit kill enter the aquatic update which has given us new ways of moving mobs around more specifically i'm talking here about soul Soul sand bubble columns. Placing soul sand at the bottom of any kind of full column of water sources sets up this bubble column that pushes stuff up to the surface. This includes players, items, and other entities, and it also includes guardians. Not only that, but guardians are able to spawn in bubble columns because technically the bubble columns ca count as a solid block of water. And therefore, with enough soul sand down here, it is possible to push any guardians that spawn within a certain area up to the surface and then control them through flowing water streams so that they fall down into a central area where they can be killed. Now, this design was probably thought up by a few different people once soul sand bubble columns were implemented, but the one of the pioneers of this design and possibly the most well-known example of this design is by Cubfan135. He plays on the Hermitcraft server. He's a well-known technical Minecrafter, and he has provided a tutorial for this design long before I've even tackled it. So if you want to go and see the original tutorial for this design, I will leave a link to that in the description below because I think it's kind of important to credit your sources when it comes to this stuff. I haven't actually watched Cub's tutorial all the way through, full disclosure, but I, I think I know the basics. I think I understand how this is supposed to work. And so we're going to need a few things to make sure that this doesn't become an agonizing process to do. For a start, we need to plot out the boundary of the ocean monument, and I'm going to make it basically the entire size of the ocean monument here. We're probably going to finish up 
around here. So I'm going to make a few columns of stone, and this is what I want to avoid, because I really don't want to be lasered by guardians any time I set foot in this place. And we're going to basically have to take down the entire ocean monument and probably refill it with water, if I'm honest, because <laughs> this design does require that there are solid water sources from the ocean floor all the way up to the surface. So we're either going to have to refill it with water or hope that the water sources underneath the surface will reform once we take the ocean monument out of the picture. But for, st for a start, we're going to mark out the outer boundary of the ocean monument using stone. And I can use either stone or dirt for this. Basically, I want it to be a material that is easily removed later. So I've got a beacon with me, and I'm probably going to bring my conduit over here as well for extra water breathing when it comes to taking down the monument itself. But I'm going to bring a beacon over, and we're going to set that up for haste if we want to remove the stone later. But first of all, I think I'll probably set it up with resistance and regeneration, because that will mean a few less opportunities for the guardians to kill us. We will be regenerating health and we will be better defended at the same time because I really don't want to lose my stuff and I'm quite proud of the fact that I've still only died once in this entire world and it was intentionally when we jumped off into the void at the end of our end raiding episode. So there's going to be there's going to be a few opportunities for us to die here and I would prefer to avoid that if at all possible. There we go, resistance and regeneration. So hopefully we should not get murdered by the fish. Now let me grab a little bit more stone from over here because what I want to do is create a, basically a flat platform at the surface level of the water here that's going to allow us to work without the guardians attacking us and it's going to allow us to lay down basically the, the mechanism if you want to call it that, that is going to be pushing the Guardians in. Basically, we're going to be setting up areas of fence gates that the Guardians can come up through, but then is going to be able to channel the water into an area where the Guardians are going to fall through some lava and then into a collection area where we can do a one-shot kill on them with a diamond sword. So, yeah, let's put some of this stuff away. Let's grab a little bit more stone. Where did I put the stone? I've got so much of it. There we go. I've also brought a bunch of sand with me because originally when Guardian Farms were first conceived, the idea was that you would dry out the entire perimeter using sand or something like that. You could section it off using sponges or you could just gather enough sand to fill the entire bounding box of a monument and further with sand. But I think for the moment we'll probably just stick to covering this up using stone because we don't plan on drying a huge amount of this area out. Sand is also very useful though if you want to place it from the surface because it is a gravity affected block. Sand being affected by gravity is incredibly useful when it comes to clearing out an ocean monument because all you need to do is place it on the surface and it'll drop down to the ocean floor and you can kind of create a massive wall just from one position up here, keeping you relatively safe from attack by all of the guardians that are down here. What I'm hoping to do with this is by past that step entirely. So we're just going to create a big stone platform and one that should we take out the stone platform at the end of the day, the water sources are going to reform underneath it. So that really shouldn't be a big deal. And despite it having quite a large radius, we're getting quite far away from the beacon. I don't think we're getting the regeneration and resistance effects everywhere. We're only getting them when we're a little bit closer to the shore here, about halfway down this line. So yeah, I need to be a little bit careful when it comes to this. I might actually move the beacon into the center over here so that we can have the effect wherever we stand in the radius of this ocean monument. But oh boy, it's going to take a lot of doing. So this right here is the full perimeter of the ocean monument. It is about a 58 by 58 area. It is not small. <laughs> so I'm not sure if we will use the ex entire exterior of this right away. And there's also a good reason for that, because these bubble column farms, especially because it's a solid block of bubble columns, that's about 2,000 bubble columns or more in a relatively small area, plus the activity of all the guardians, tends to lag the client out a little bit. It will lag out clients, it will lag out servers a little bit as well, I expect. There's going to be a bit of a performance hit, because there's just so much going on in terms of particles, in terms of the game trying to calculate the movement of these guardians. It's going to have a bit of a difficult time. So... It may help on lower performance systems. I've got a pretty beefy PC, so I'm fairly confident this will be okay. But on lower performance systems, it might be a good idea to actually, you know, limit the area of the farm to a smaller radius. Clear out the rest of it with sand and sponges, that kind of thing, and maybe just leave, I don't know, like a, a couple of chunks worth of space in the center where stuff can spawn. Because what we're going for right here is absolute maximum output 
and it's going to be pretty hefty. I'm also absolutely fine with collecting the ink that the Guardians keep killing squids for because, yeah, I kind of want this for Dark Prismarine. It's the main thing. I want to build a lot at Founder's Forge with Dark Prismarine, and right now I need all of the ink and Guardian sort of Prismarine shards that I can get. So we're going to be building an ink farm at some point as well because ink farms are pretty essential if you want to build anything in large quantities with Dark Prismarine. But the rest of this process is just going to be filling in this stone square for the moment, so it's not going to be all that exciting. So I'm going to cut away for a little bit. I'll probably put a podcast on and do the rest of this, and I'll see you guys on the other side. That is a really big square of material, <laughs> but we finally got this entire thing covered, and it has taken a little while, but I'm happy with it. I think this is going to be a great foundation for what we need to do next. I went over and grabbed the conduit, by the way, because we would definitely need that in the near future, but yeah, I also <laughs> discovered where I'd been keeping all of the blocks of iron for my beacon. See, when the shulker box is filled up with stone like that, it kind of tells you when you hover over it that it's like, this is a bunch of stone and 22 more, and so I assumed considering that I had another shulker box that was completely full of stone, that the contents of that were entirely stone. It turns out, nope, that's where I've been keeping all of the stuff that I took out of the slime farm. Well, <laughs> turns out I didn't need to bring all of these other iron blocks over here at all, because I already had them nearby. So we've covered over the entirety of the ocean monument, at least as far as the boundary there is concerned. And I think this is going to be a good start. So the next step is to get a ton of fence gates, which I've already prepared, but I will probably need more of them in the long run anyway. And we're going to create a series of 8x8 areas for water to flow down into a single point. And that's going to mean raising it up by one block each time. So there's going to be an 8x8 area at the edge here. And then there's going to be like a, almost like a staircase, I suppose, of fence gates leading up in 8x8 in eight eight steps. It's going to be easier to show you this than it is to explain it verbally, but <laughs> if you've seen Cub Van's tutorial, you'll probably understand. So the middle point of our platform is about here. We're going to be placing a row of eight fence gates, like so. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I think we need one more on this end here, eight. Actually, that needs shifting over one space this way, so it could be like that. And yeah, that's that's the middle point of our platform. And we want to create an eight by eight grid of these fence gates. So we're going out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that right there is 64 fence gates. And now you can see why I've made so many fence gates. But if I take down the prismarine perimeter around here, I'll show you what this is going to do. As we've explored elsewhere in this series, fence gates have the property of blocking water. And even if they are opened out like this so that we as a player and other entities like the Guardians can pass through them, it's still going to block water running on it from above. And if I've placed a series of water sources along here, what we get is a flowing section of water, much like the one we've used in mob farms before. But once the bubble columns are installed at the bottom of this, the Guardians will be pushed up through these fence gates into this flowing water. They'll be trapped in the flowing water stream and propelled over here, where we're going to create another pair of water streams that are going to guide them into a drop through lava and into our killing mechanism. So basically the next step is to create these 8x8 fence gate areas in a kind of cascading stair step pattern throughout this entire area so that, that way whenever they get pushed up whenever the guardians get pushed up into this area they're going to hit one of these areas of fence gates and it's going to funnel them all into this spot here it's going to be quite an operation and it's going to be a lot easier to do while this is all still dry so we're actually going to take down the prismarine here once again because the next step of the fence gates has to all be up one block in this direction. And the final result is going to look something like this. But of course we're not done because we're going to fill up this entire area with these steps of fence gates. And once we've done that, it will be necessary to fill in the bottom part of each of these with full water sources because remember the bubble columns need to reach right up to underneath these fence gates to propel the guardians up into the water streams that are going to carry them out this way. So we will need to make sure that all of the bottom halves of these are filled in with water, but that should be relatively straightforward once we've got all of this laid out. Now we're gonna start on the next layer, which is going to be even higher and higher and higher until we reach all the way to the back of this thing. This is quite the undertaking, and I will need to go and get some more wood because I guarantee you I'm gonna run out of fence gates real soon, but that shouldn't be a problem for the moment. I'll just place a few more areas of this before I go. And once again, we're going to cut away because you guys get the idea at this point. You, I'll show you the finished product, but hopefully you should have a, a basic understanding of the process by which this is all happening now. 
And this has taken me pretty much all morning and into the afternoon, but we are just about finishing up here. This, <laughs> you guys need to see how big this area is once I get it all finished up, because believe me, there are a lot of fence gates here, as you can probably tell. This is a, yeah, <laughs> this uh, a 56 by 56, is that how much it works out as? I think uh, that, that area of fence gates, and I put a border of prismarine around the outside so we can place those against that but oh yes doesn't it look good now <laughs> like it's one of those things where just a repeated pattern of stuff and a very very simple kind of border around the outside can actually look really good and so obviously the idea is that we're going to go around it's going to be really difficult to do this i'm probably gonna to have to like close a couple of the fence gates as i go but i'm going to place water buckets around here so we just make a ton of water sources the walls will help with that of course but then we need to fill up the bottom part of this as well. So I'll need to put a uh, another barrier around here, around the outside, and then we'll just fill it up with water sources from there. I kind of want to do that with glass, so the farm is a little bit see-through, and we can watch the guardians come up to the surface. I think I might do that. That's going to need a lot of glass, though. So maybe we'll put a border around with prismarine first, uh, just along the bottom here, and then we'll fill in the rest of it with glass. Because I have a ton of prismarine right now. I'm just bringing it up from the ocean monument as I need it. But this took a lot of oak wood. If you imagine that each fence gate is basically an oak log, because if you take the log, split it into four planks, split two of those planks down into sticks, and you have two planks and four sticks, which is what you need to make a fence gate. So each of these is a stack of fence gates. That constitutes one full stack of oak logs. And then there's seven by seven square of these eight by eight areas, basically basically means that, yeah, we had 49, if my math is correct, 49 stacks of oak logs have gone into just making the fence gates for this. So as you can see, this might be a project that you want to scale a scale back a little bit if you're doing it in your own world. Look, look at the sheer amount of fence gates I have left as well, because I was like, I didn't do the maths beforehand. I just went ahead and made as many fence gates as I could. There we go. We've got some more prismarine bricks in here we can use. But yeah, this has been, wow, a whole lot of work already. And we are, this is just stage one. We're not onto stage two quite yet. So the next step is going to be to flood the entirety of this first level and then to bring Bring in the glass so that we can flood the subsequent levels heading up there and it's going to be a smaller and smaller space each time and it should be fairly easy to do all we all need to do is place water sources all the way along this wall and all the way along the back wall and the fact that you have two water sources combining next to each other like that to create one water source in the middle should hopefully take care of the rest Yep, you can start to see the water sources filling in there already, which is great stuff, because that's just going to naturally flood the whole bottom of this place. Oh, give or take the occasional water source disappearing here and there when I put it in a bucket. And yeah, that's just going to go all the way along there, filling up the rest of this with sources. And once we've got a water source in the corner, this should be the last couple we need to place. And all of the rest of that can fill in. Amazing stuff. All of the torches should also have flown all the way down to the bottom here, so we should be able to pick those up, riding that wave. And because of the fence gates interfering over there, we probably need to place a couple more sources over here just to get this corner tidied up, but that should be it. Now to go and make a mountain of glass. It's a good thing I gathered all that sand in the first place, because even though we won't need it to kind of border the ocean monument itself, we will need to make a whole bunch of glass out of it. So a little bit of glass taken care of and eight furnaces merrily smelting away what I have left of the sand from those shulker boxes. I think I'll probably do like a multi-striped pattern of gray and light gray and possibly either white or black. I don't really have a great deal of black and I'm trying to save the ink where I can, but I think we can probably work that in. But we'll start with gray. The glass color doesn't really make any difference and quite frankly, it doesn't need to be glass at all, but I don't know. I'm, I'm obsessed with the aesthetics of these things. I feel like it's, it's gonna be fun to insert a little bit of stylized stuff into this. And I've just realized that the boundary down here doesn't quite line up with the boundary up there. And even though this is the full area of the ocean monument, the boundary up there is actually more important because that's where the edges of these 8x8 areas of fence gates end. So I am actually going to have to bring this in by one block on those three sides. The front is fine, but those three sides are the ones that need to change. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to take down a whole bunch of this and rebuild it again. But that shouldn't take too long, hopefully. It's certainly not going to take as long as placing all of the fence gates did. Okay, we have a third layer of glass in and everything has been adjusted to fit properly. And I think it's about time that we started getting some more of these water sources in. We shouldn't have too much further to go. And each of these layers is going to get smaller and smaller each time. 
meaning that, yeah, it really shouldn't take all that long for us to fill the rest of this back up. I just have to avoid doing that. I <laughs> have to avoid opening trap doors by mistake when we get up to this sort of height. Did I just say trap doors? I mean fence gates. <laughs> this, this project is making me lose my mind slightly. Well, so much water placed, and the water is pretty much filled up to the brim behind all of those fence gates. And thankfully, the Guardians have yet been killing more squid. So I've been picking up bits and pieces of ink here and there, which is really nice. It's going to be a great starter for all of our Dark Prismarine that we're going to get from this thing. Now, let's take a quick look at it from the air, because if I can actually take off, this is actually pretty cool to look at. Oh, that's why I can't take off. My elytra is broken, and that's the first time that has ever happened to me. Obviously, they look pretty much the same on my player, but when you go into the inventory, they are trashed. That's a concern, because I <laughs> I do not have I do not have a means to go back through the nether without flying. So we may have to make a boat and travel home. Alternatively, I could just kill a couple of guardians here and there, but they're a little bit difficult to kill when they're not inside the monument, when they're in their element like this, they are a little bit tricky. I wonder, do we have the trident here in my ender chest? I think it might be here in the backup gear shulker box. Yes. All right, <laughs> let's go spear fishing. All I'm really after at this stage is enough XP that I can repair my elytra. And it's going to naturally gravitate to some of my other tools as well, including my trident. But oh gosh, yeah, I am... I am outnumbered and outgunned down here is the problem. And ironically enough, this thing is going to be a ridiculously good XP farm once I've managed to uh, set this whole thing up. But for now, it is basically just a death trap. Thankfully, the regeneration beacon is helping me with that a little bit. Oh, and there's some prismarine crystals floating to the surface. Don't mind if I do. I will take those. But yeah, I just got maybe 12 XP back on my elytra. Get back. Get away from me, laser fish. How dare you? Thankfully, impaling... This is one of the few mobs that impaling actually works on, so having a trident to attack these guys is not a bad thing. And yeah, I would take the rest of my armor off so that my... Uh, my all the XP would actually go to my elytra, but the problem with that is that I would find myself very, very vulnerable as a result. Okay, 33 durability should be enough to get me back through the nether. i got to hope that it doesn't break halfway through, though. I'll try and play this as safe as I possibly can. Keeping an eye on that durability as I fly back, but no, it looks like we'll be fine. Thank goodness for unbreaking, I guess. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna head to the XP farm real quick just to mend some of this stuff. The rest of my tools are fine, but the elytra we cannot afford to be without at this point. Okay, back in action, and thankfully the elytra really doesn't take that long to repair because the durability on it is fairly slim. So now we're into the kind of final process of setting up this section of the Guardian farm where we're just going to have to place down these water sources on the fence gates. And that's going to take a little bit of scaffolding. So I'll grab a few more prismarine bricks, I guess, if we've got some of those still hanging out around here. Or maybe I'll just use the stone, actually thinking about it, because that will be nice and easy to remove. Could probably do the same with dirt if we had any. But like I said, each of these areas here is also going to have to have water sources running along the back line of fences here so that everything ends up flowing down into this point, which means each individual row of these is going to need its own set of water sources. I'm basically having to crouch the entire time because otherwise I end up moving around one of these fence gates. And of course, <laughs> I always have to have them facing the same direction because otherwise I lose my mind slightly. And if you thought we were done placing fence gates, we are unfortunately not because each of these areas will need a kind of breaking line of fences here to make sure that the water doesn't flow over in two different directions and leave this area completely dry. So we are gonna need to add in a bunch of fence gates along here. I've already done that for this row over here, but basically you wanna make sure that the water is only flowing in one direction. If it's flowing in two directions like this, if it's going that way and then that way, you risk leaving an area like that exposed. So it's probably best to make sure that we get the entire row of water to spread out like that. There we go, that's better. Now, thankfully, it is quite easy to walk along the top of fence gates if you are precise enough. You just gotta make sure that you can step up onto a block and then up onto the fence gate. Because remember, these are like fences, they're a block and a half high. You could even put jump boost on the beacon if you wanted to jump up that high and it wouldn't be a problem. Now, you can open these up a little bit. We'll do a few of these along the sides. It's gonna be even trickier to get the ones in the middle done, so I'll probably wrangle those off camera because it's uh, <laughs> it's actually gonna be super tricky to do those. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely possible to do, but it is like 
performing surgery. <laughs> I've got so much of this left to do. I think we might actually have to split this episode into two parts. I think this might be my first two-parter episode because there ain't no way I'm getting this done today. Not in a single day. Oh, gosh. And after basically a full day's work, I never want to see another fence gate again. <laughs> this has been such a long project, and this is only it half done, but I'm afraid that is where we're going to have to leave it. So let's take a quick look at the checklist for the stuff that we need to do in tomorrow's episode, because I do want to get this one finished tomorrow. It's going to be a two-parter, basically my first two-parter I've ever done with this series, but this is going to be part one, the setup, and part two, the, I don't know, the, the quickening, <laughs> the whatever, whatever we want to call it. We need to take out the entirety of the temple down here. We need to make sure that it's all flooded back in. So I need to probably either place a little bit of water or hope that the water sources under there are just going to reform, which they should do in theory. But in practice, these things are never entirely that simple. So I will just go layer by layer and, and see what we need to do there. After that, we need to put in the soul sand bubble columns and take out the floor from underneath this so that it is water all the way up, making sure that the guardians can get into those streams. And we need to set up a kill mechanism. In fact, said kill mechanism is probably one of the first things we need to do before we do any of the other stuff we probably need to take care of how these guardians are going to die because if i release them all into the the soul sand bubble columns they come up here and then they have nowhere to go they're all just going to pile into this central section here and it's going to be an absolute nightmare putting the kill mechanism together so i think it's probably best if we do that first and we're going to tackle that tomorrow but i've got a pretty decent idea of what we're going to do for that so it should be nice and simple but that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Sorry to leave you guys on a cliffhanger, but I'm sure you guys will enjoy tomorrow's episode just as much. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you did enjoy this one. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.